stomach ulcers are mainly caused by a bacteria that we call H. pylori, which affect majority of the people on this planet because around 50 to 75 percent are infected by this bacteria, but only a handful, 25 percent, gets the actual uh, stomach ulcers, what you usually call PUD, which is peptic ulcers disease. And uh, PUD, this is just a sore on the lining of the stomach or the upper part of the small intestines, what we call duodenum. So we are concentrating on uh, the gastric part, which is the stomach, and the duodenum, which is the upper part of the intestines. Now, this infection mostly happens when you're still young. So you get that bacteria when you're still young because of the tendency or the probability of eating contaminated food because this is the major root of the infection. So you get food which is contaminated uh, with fecal material from someone who had this bacteria, you automatically uh, get this infection. But then getting the actual disease is selective and uh, actually uh, it's not actually known exactly how it causes diseases in some people very few of them, and leaves others out. Because you might find that, yes, I have H. pylori bacteria, but I don't have stomach ulcers. But someone else have them, and they have that uh, PUD, that the ulcers, the stomach ulcers. So in this video, you're going to concentrate on how it causes those stomach ulcers, uh, some of the signs and symptoms that, you, that can help you identify whether you have this infection, and also what we can do to this infection. This is uh, the diagnosis and the treatment. Now, the exact way H. pylori causes the gastritis or peptic ulcers in some people is still unknown. Like I said, it's very selective. You have people who will get stomach ulcers, others will not. But those who are susceptible to this infection, the bacteria gets into their stomach and lodges into the wall of either the stomach or the duodenum. Like we said, we have um, the duodenum, the upper part of the intestines, and we have the stomach wall. Now, remember, in the stomach, we have a very concentrated acid that usually help in a digestive process process. And uh, long ago, scientists never believed that there would be anything that would survive there, anything living like a bacteria, until later on, H. pylori came to disapprove them. This bacteria is able to grow and multiply in the stomach, despite the harsh conditions that we said it's very acidic. It can go uh, to the lows of 2, a pH of 2, that's very corrosive. And by the way, your stomach has a lining of mucus that usually prevents uh, the acids from corroding your stomach walls. So, this bacteria is very d dangerous when it's on that wall because when it's using the urease enzyme it usually produces that converts the urea to ammonia, it's able to neutralize that acid and it's, it's able to survive. And that's very dangerous because you see, the condition around that place is acidic. And in case that ulcer continue being there without being treated, the acid can digest the stomach wall and this can lead to the ulceration and also perforation of that wall leading to more complications. Let's go to the signs and symptoms. Now, um, this H. pylori usually cause PUD, this is peptic ulcer disease, and also gastritis. But some of the symptoms usually overlap with other conditions which are not necessarily caused by H. pylori. But you're going to look at those which are more affiliated to having this infection. Like having like a, a burning pain in your stomach, mostly a few hours after eating, or maybe at night. And the pain may be brief or frequent, and it may take some few hours, to even days and even weeks. Now, um, the severity usually depends with the level of infection that you have. If it's already, it's, let's say, it's starting, it may be mild and may take several minutes or maybe some few hours. But when uh, it's chronic, you've been with this condition for quite a long t period of time, the pain might uh, prolong itself to even weeks and even it can be even uh, more painful because it's now maybe extending to other areas or maybe you have several ulcers already in your in your wall so this might uh, compound the pain that you're going to get we have other symptoms like loss of appetite of course when you don't feel okay in your stomach you're most likely uh, going to not like eating because after eating you're going to get this burning or the pain in your stomach so you gen generally just lose appetite you're going to have unplanned weight loss and this is partly because of the loss of appetite because if you're not eating as as well you're definitely going to lose your weight and we have bloating then burping bloating is when you have uh, that gas in the stomach and burping is that gas coming out uh, to your mouth and pay attention to the smell of that gas because sometimes it may feel um, like you are rare if 
that's the smell then this is a confirmation that you have h pylori infection in you now you might get nausea and vomiting at times you might get bloody vomit because you see the ulcer that you already have there is affecting your stomach and already you have acids there they are going to corrode the walls again exposing the blood capillaries that you have there so this blood might leak into your stomach and start uh, mixing with the contents and when you feel like you want to vomit or when you vomit you're going to vomit this blood we have indigestions because you see uh, your stomach is already irritated so even the production of um, digestive juices is affected we have dark stools from the blood in your uh, in your stool and uh, remember like we said if you already have those perforations that are leaking blood into your abdomen or not abdomen into your stomach when you vomit you're going to vomit this blood but in case you don't vomit and it goes down through the digestive canal through the uh, duodenum through the small intestines and uh, all the way out uh, this blood will kind of be digested along the way and it's going to be dark it's going to you're going to have like a dark looking stool and a good test for this to check whether you have that uh, perforation in, you know, in your stomach and you're having that the blood is leaking into your stomach or maybe into your intestines is by taking a test that we call uh, fecal occult blood now this test will look for the hidden blood inside your stool because you might it might not be very obvious so in your stool in case you find that it's dark chances are high that in your upper part of the digestive system you have blood leaking into it if you have fresh blood in your stool it means that whatever infection that you have or whatever condition that's leaking blood into your intestines is either in your colon or maybe around your anal opening so it's around there but if the blood is dark if the stool is dark it means that whatever you had or whatever the, the blood that is already in that stool is coming from the upper part of the digestive system and we have risk factors that can contribute to getting this infection remember we said we don't actually know exactly what's going on uh, because this bacteria usually selects some few people but we have risk factors like sanitation if you are maybe the food or the water that you're taking is contaminated definitely you're going to have that infection okay you're not going to have the ulcers yes but if you have the risk factors like the genetical factors that can lead to you getting that condition it means that uh, you'll be prone to getting that but suppose maybe something happened you have an ulceration in your stomach and you don't have that heat priority chances are high that you are going to heal completely well but if you have that laceration or ulceration in your stomach due to anything uh, that might cause this like we are going to see um, and then you happen to have this H. pyrrhi bacteria within you it's going to take that opportunity to stay there now we have um, some other things like genetic factors like we said if you have a family history of getting uh, this ulcers it means that you are prone to getting this infection you also have um, medication like NSAIDs. This is non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. When you take them for a prolonged period of time, you are prone to getting ulceration in your stomach. So you're going to um, hurt your stomach in a way, or even your, your intestines. And this is where now the H. pyrrhi will take advantage of. If you already have that bacteria with you and then you create that opportunity, it's going to stay there and establish itself. Another risk factor is living with someone that has H. pyrrhi already. So if you live with them, you're prone to getting this infection because this bacteria, like we saw, it can be transmitted from one person to another. But you'll have to have the factors that will lead to this bacteria establishing itself in the stomach or the duodenum and are getting the ulcer. So if you don't have the factors, you'll have the bacteria, yes, but it's not going to cause any infection. Like we said, if you're among the 25%, you're going to get the ulcers. If you're not, then we just live with the bacteria and it will not cause any harm. Now let's look at some of the complications of this infection. Now, one is ulcers. If you have this bacteria, uh, it usually damage the protective lining, the mucous membrane that usually coats your stomach and avoid uh, the digestion by some of the acids and digestive juices. So if this is broken, it will allow the stomach acids to create open source. And about 25%, this is usually small, so it, uh, around 10% to 25% of the people with H. pyrrhi will develop the ulcers that you're talking about. We have the inflammation of the stomach, what we usually call gastritis. And uh, this is because of um, now you have this bacteria, it's affecting your wall. 
So your immunity will try as much as possible to fight it off and it will lead to a swelling or what we are calling now gastritis. So this swelling will be because of your body trying to fight off this bacteria and uh, we have the inflammatory response that will lead to you having the stomach upsets, pain in the stomach, uh, bloating, a lot of those conditions. So gastritis will come because of the inflammation of the stomach lining. Now we have stomach cancer. Now H. pylori can cause this but rarely. It's rare now, but um, it, it, it can contribute to getting cancer, the stomach cancers, because of a continued infection by this bacteria. So if you have a chronic infection by H. pylori, you are at a risk of getting this stomach cancer. But if you treat this bacteria, the risks go away. But remember, the stomach cancer, we have other factors that can contribute to that. And um, H. pylori is just very low there on the table. Now let's go to diagnosis. When you go to that hospital, you will go meet your doctor and uh, they want to confirm whether you have that infection or not. What are some of the tests that they are going to use to confirm or um, defy the fact that you have this infection? So if you don't have, you're going to be negative. If you have it, it's going to be positive. Now the first one is breath test. Now in this test, you exhale into a bag before or after drinking a solution. Now this is a solution that you're going to be given but before you take that uh, solution you exhale into a bag and then you take that solution and then you ex exhale into that bag and the test measures the amount of co2 this is carbon dioxide that will be released into your breath before and after drinking the solution so if you have a higher level um, after drinking the solution it means that you have h pylori in your stomach another very popular test is uh, from your stool so you're given a container you go put your stool there then you take it back to the laboratory and they're going to use their tools to know whether you have that H. pylori in that stool. There's another laboratory test also that uses blood, so they're going to draw blood from you and then look for the traces of infection by H. pylori. Because when you have that infection, your body will produce antibodies against that bacteria. In this case, you're talking about H. pylori. And uh, those antibodies will be what you'll be looking into when you draw blood. So if we find that uh, you have antibodies inside your blood that are specific to H. pylori and it means that you have that infection or maybe you had that infection in case you had IgG or you have IgG but if you have IgM which is amicrobin M it means that you have an active infection by this bacteria H. pylori. Another test is using the imaging so they use an endoscopy which is a flexible tube with a camera at the end that will be inserted uh, through uh, through your throat all the way to your stomach and a small tissue is taken also you can use this um, the camera to visualize the lining of the stomach and even your intestines and uh, we can use still the same technology to get some um, some of the portion of the small intestines or maybe your stomach a portion of it and then we test that for H. pylori. Before we go to treatment we have preventions yes we have uh, we have clean water hand hygiene and uh, there is no vaccine, so it's not like a uh, corella where we have vaccine. We don't have one for this, but maybe we might get to have this once we understand exactly what's causing. Some other people to get these infections, others are not getting, and they have the same strain of the same bacteria. So let's go to treatment. When it comes to H. pylori and uh, treatments, uh, there are several things you need to understand. We'll have to have several types of drugs that will do different things at the same time. The first one will be the antibiotics that will be dealing with the actual bacteria. We have an acid reducing proton pump inhibitors that will help in um, modulating the pH around where that uh, drug will be, uh, will be working on. And uh, also you might be given another drug that will help in uh, protecting the lining of your stomach. So the two are very important, uh, the antibiotics and uh, the proton and the proton pump inhibitors, so they're very important, but then your doctor might decide to add another one that will protect the lining of your stomach. Let's go to antibiotics. Usually, your doctor will give you two, um, and among the common ones, we have amoxicillin, we have clarithromycin, we have one with a brand name, um, Baxin, so we have Fragel, we have tetracycline, also can be used, so it's a combination of two antibiotics. Now let's go to proton pump inhibitors. There are many here, but I'm going to concentrate on the active compounds so that in case you go and find another brand name but with the same active compound, you can just know this is a proton pump inhibitor. We have omeprazole, we have lansoprazole, we have pantoprazole, 
we have something like um esomeprazole and some other more that I'm not getting. I'll try to list them here on, on the screen. Now we go to the third category, and uh, this is purely optional. Your doctor might give you this or not. The first two are very important, so you need to have them. But for this one, you might have them or not. But in case you have them, we have something like bismuth subsalicylate. Now, this one is a drug that will be added to your other drugs, the categories that we have mentioned, and the work will be to protect the stomach lining. So if you have this drug, it will protect uh, the stomach lining from the actions of the drugs that you're talking about here and also the action of the stomach acids. Now, the combination of the drugs that we have mentioned there, the three of them, or maybe the two, like we mentioned, one of them is optional. I usually take um, 14 days. So you get that dose for 14 days, you are free of this H. pylori. For the same reason, we actually don't know why it selects other people from others. This bacteria can reoccur, so the infection can sometimes come back because maybe the factors that caused this actual thing in the first place are still there. So you're going back to maybe taking the oral medications, the painkillers, uh, for a continued period of time. You're going to also have this infection again because you are, you, the factors are still there. So you might have this infection coming back severely. But in case everything was elevated, whatever that caused this infection is not there anymore. You are supposed to not have that infection ever. It's supposed to resolve forever. So, um, yeah. There is a new drug I was reading about. Actually, I've not used it, So, it, but it looks very interesting. It's called Talisia. This is a brand name. And it's usually combined two antibiotics, uh, that is lifabutin and amoxicillin, with a proton pump inhibitor. So it has both into a single capsule. So you are given just only this single dose and whatever will help in protecting your stomach wall and you're done. Instead of taking uh, the two categories, you take only one drug containing the two categories and also you just take the third category that we saw earlier. But I don't know, I've not interacted with this drug so I don't know how much or how effective it is. But it looks very interesting.